Hello and welcome to another video on Inkscape, a powerful, free, open source, scalable vector graphics editor. Click on the link in the top right if you want to learn more about how you can download it for free. In this video we're going to look at how we can save our projects and back up our work. We're going to look at exporting work as a PNG. We can set the image size. We can also set the DPI, dots per inch, for our exported image. And finally we'll be taking a look at importing images to use in our projects. So the first thing we're going to look at is saving our work. Uh, if we create a piece of artwork, first thing we want to do is save it. So if we go up to File, down to Save, it'll pop open a dialog box. So just like in other programs, we can go up to the top, we can choose which folder we'd like to put it in. We can change the name that we'd like to use, so we call this Smile. You can choose which format you'd like to save it as. So if you're just saving your work uh, for use in Inkscape, then Inkscape SVG is probably your best option. There's a selection of others you can use. You've got GIMP palette, probably more ideal for GIMP. You've got uh, PDF, probably better if you're using it for desktop publishing. Yeah, you've got a nice selection of formats you can use. So once you've chosen your format, we'll stick with Inkscape SVG you can save your project. Now as you go on and do more work to your project, we want it one-eyed, we can go back up and just click on save and that'll save, resave it under the same name in the same place and you can just carry on working that way. As your work progresses you'll probably want to make backups. So we've got a couple of options that you can use probably the best option for just backing up your work is save a copy. So if we click on save a copy, it pops up with the same name in the same place. So we could change it to smile one and save it. What this will do is save a backup copy as smile one and we carry on working on the same file. So we're still working on smile, but we've now got a backup copy at that point called smile one. The other option you can use, you can save as. Now this will change the file name of the file we're working on. So if we put save as, we call this smile2. So when we save it this time, it's actually saved it, but it's changed the name of the file we're working on to smile2. So now we're working on smile2. So whichever, whichever option suits your needs. I think that covers saving, so we go on and take a look at exporting images as PNGs. So exporting files. We export files as a PNG file because it's more widely used by other programs. Scalable vector graphics are great. You can create a, an image the size of a postage stamp and scale it to the size of a billboard with no loss of quality. But they're not actually used by many programs. So we quite often use PNGs to export our images. PNGs are a, a raster graphics format so they're made up of dots or pixels but unlike some they also support uh, transparency so if you're making your images to use as designs for t-shirts you can put it on a transparent background they also use lossless compression so although they try to reduce the size of your image file they don't do it at the loss of the quality of your image unlike jpegs which use a lossy compression algorithm which results in deterioration of your image every time you save it so how do we export a PNG image? If we, oh, I've already got it open. I'll just close that down. If we go up to file, you can go down, you've got export PNG image. So we click on that one and that brings up your uh, export dialog box. So if I just zoom out so we can have a look at what I've done on this page. If, we got, if I click four on the keyboard, that'll show us our whole image. Um, this section is the page that I'm working on. So what I've done, I've just created a very simple illustration using three different shapes. I've overlapped them slightly off the page so we can look at the, the different export areas we can use. So the first one, if we go up to our export area, is page. When we export page, it just exports everything that's on the page. So anything off the page gets cut off. So as we can see here, the tip of the the um, star got cut off and part of the circle has been cut off. Next one along is drawing. If we use drawing, it exports the entire drawing. So it draw a boundary box 
tight around our drawing and exports the whole drawing regardless of whether it's on your page or not. Selection exports what's in the boundary box of a selection. So if we click on the star, which is what I had selected when I exported this image, you can see inside the boundary box there's a substantial portion of the rectangle and there's a tiny bit of the circle. So it exports everything that's in the boundary box of the selection. Custom allows us to choose which part of the image we want to export. So if we go up to our dialog box, we've got a section at the top here which has X0, Y0, X1, Y1. Now X0, Y0 is the coordinates for the very top left hand corner of your boundary box and X1, Y1 is the coordinates of the bottom right hand corner of your boundary box and you also have width and height that you can adjust. At the bottom you've got the units you're using. At the moment it's set to pixels but you can have millimeters, inches, centimeters. The next section down in our export dialog box is image size. This is where we can set the resolution of our image being exported. Um, there's two ways we need to look at for doing this. Firstly, if we're working in inches or millimeters or centimeters, we can set our resolution using the DPI setting in image size. So if we wanted it for printing, we could set that to 300 and our exported image would have a resolution of 300. If the units we're working in are pixels, then things are a little bit different. So we want to keep the height and width the same, but we want to change the resolution. To do that, we need to go down to Advanced. And down here we have Physical DPI. We can change it to 300 down here and that will force Inkscape to export the image with a resolution of 300 dpi. So just a quick recap. If we're working in inches, millimeters, centimeters, then we can adjust resolution in the image size box. If the units we've been working in are pixels, so the image size is what we want, but we want the resolution to be different, then we change it by going to Advanced and setting the physical DPI. So the last thing I want to cover in this video is importing images. When we're building up pictures, we might want reference drawings or we want, might want to import a drawing from somewhere else that we can use in our project. So to import images, if we go up to File, we come down to Import, click on Import. We can go to wherever we want, choose our file, Perhaps we'll choose this uh, Kingfisher. And a dialog box will pop up. This just allows you to make a few choices on how you want it imported. The first section is embed or link. Embed makes a copy of the image and puts it into your project. Now this is generally a better option. Link links back to the original image and means you have to move both files together. So I always use embed. It makes it a standalone file and just generally more user friendly. Uh, image DPI, we can just set that from file. So it'll take the DPI of the file we're importing. Image rendering, this is just how the image is rendered. So we can leave that as none or auto. You could have it smoothing to, to um, smooth the image slightly, but it's not really going to make a huge amount of difference, so I'd stick with none. So basically leave it just as your standard settings or your default settings. Click OK and that'll import the image. Then you can scale it, move it about, do whatever you want with it. And that's importing. I think that covers everything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.